Hi, I'm Steve Teachin, Merced County Superintendent of Schools, and I want to thank you for tuning into this video to learn about how schools have faced the health crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Normally, we'd host several community meetings and celebrate the successes of our public schools with student performances and a presentation about the state of our schools here in the county. But like so many other parts of our lives, that changed this year, and we have to adapt to a virtual format to provide the report and this accompanying video that gives a glimpse into what it's been like this past year. It was almost exactly one year ago today that Governor Newsom announced restrictions to help slow the spread of COVID-19. Since that announcement, we have worked to ensure all students have the tools to succeed in a distance learning format, created plans and protocols for a safe return to in-person instruction, supported our districts to return to in-person instruction, all while adjusting to ever-changing guidelines set forth by state and public health officials. During the past year of the pandemic, we've been reminded just how vital our schools are to the surrounding communities, families, and most importantly, our students. I again thank you for taking the time to learn more about the school response to this health crisis. I would plan and assume that it's unlikely that many of these schools uh, will open uh, before the summer break. Last spring, when COVID-19 arrived on the horizon line, I think we were all very, very concerned about what we didn't know. We didn't know how fast it was going to spread. We didn't know how lethal it was going to be. We didn't know where it was in California. It was important for the superintendents in Merced County to have a common approach to this challenge because they felt that we're so interconnected with families working across school boundary lines. We wanted to try to be as together as we could be. Well, the thing that happened last winter when we first were notified that COVID-19 was in California was that the governor called all county superintendents together and asked us to try to lead the work as we dealt with this crisis. Here in Merced County, we have a weekly call with the health department and the superintendents, and I agreed that this would be our pivot point each week to meet together and talk and come up with a plan that we could use and implement throughout the county. It was probably about early April when superintendents here in Merced County realized that we weren't going to be able to return to school based on a comment that went public that the governor made to his own children, expecting schools not to reopen this year. By mid-April, we began to plan for what it would be like for the rest of the 19-20 uh, school year, and districts began deploying devices on a widespread basis. They purchased hotspots to make sure that students had better connectivity, and they continued to work through the spring semester last year. And then the next challenge was graduation for high school seniors, and we all hoped that there would be high school graduations, but by early May, it was clear that we weren't going to be able to hold in-person graduation ceremonies, and school districts began to transition toward a drive-through graduation approach. So. In June, we began preparing for the next school year and we expected to open in person. We planned it. We had a low rate of transmission in June and then the 4th of July hit and we had the first big surge in the state and the governor announced on July 17th that we would not be opening again. We'd have to start in a virtual environment and that's when it really began to settle in that we were in this for the long haul. 
So as we transition to a longer term approach to this challenge of the pandemic, school districts focused first and foremost on the health and nutrition of their children and built systems to make sure that kids got their meals every day, both a breakfast and a lunch. And so it's an incredible feat that was done by our school districts in very creative ways. We had districts uh, that planned a drive-through drop-off where people would be in the parking lot and fill the trunk with a week's worth of meals, close the trunk, limit contact with the family. Other places we had meals being driven out into more rural areas on buses and being dropped off on people's porches. And so there are lots of ways that our community really rallied around the issue of food insecurity for kids that usually get two meals a day at school. The next thing that began to happen is that MCOE transitioned its staff from in-person staff development in our school districts to providing an online platform on MeTV. And MeTV had a daily schedule for students to work from by grade level. There were lesson plans available developed by our content specialists. And really it became a wonderful support system for teachers who were having to be introduced to distance learning for the first time last spring. It was utilized heavily by our community and I'm very proud of the work our staff did to make sure that there was good content out there for kids during that period of time. The distance learning website that MCOE created uh, covered multitude of uh, areas. It had a, a parent portal, it had a teacher portal, and it had a student portal. So there are resources for all the community to use during this time. There was a section on social emotional learning as well, because we know one of the things that's missing right now is this relationship that kids have in a classroom. And so we have to be aware that kids miss that. They need the connection of a significant adult in their life in a classroom in a learning situation. They also miss the companionship of their age like peers. And so the social emotional learning website was really one of our, our key additions to uh, what we offered through the MCOE platform. One of the things that uh, happened right away when the pandemic began to uh, spread was all school districts had to take a look at their school safety plan and really conform to the new OSHA standards around COVID. And so schools set up many, many steps, including masking and physical and social distancing for students and adults. One of the things you'd notice if you walked into classrooms today that we didn't have last year this time are plexiglass study carols. And by that, I mean a simple three-sided barrier of plexiglass so the teacher can see the student, but it essentially surrounds the student. So anytime they're breathing or talking, uh, that air is being stopped by the plexiglass and not spreading throughout the classroom. So that's really changed the way classrooms look and it's limited the number of kids that can be in a classroom any given time. We have 20 districts here in the county and our public health department couldn't answer 20 phone calls every day. So what we've done is use the county office as really the funnel to get information out from either the governor's office, CDE, the Department of Education in Sacramento, or our public health department. And so that has worked very, very well here in Merced County. What we've done is we've maintained a communication line to make sure that our districts understand the guidance that's coming from Sacramento or from our public health department. We have a weekly phone call with health department and districts can ask questions directly. That's really enhanced our ability to have a consistent approach to how we're handling the uh, outbreaks that may occur in our schools. And it's really allowed us to come together as a group of professionals that do the right thing every day for kids in our county. The, the other thing that Merced County Office of Education has done is continue to provide a key role of providing training for staff, particularly staff that maybe weren't as adept at using technology as, as we need to be today. And so we've put a lot of time and effort into making sure that our professional development now is done online. And we've also provided training for teachers on using the various applications that are now common in classrooms across the country. One of the other things I'd like to mention is the county office has taken a leadership role in the ask. The ask for more effective testing, the ask for more vaccines in our county, and to make sure that Merced County gets more attention than perhaps it has in the past. Many times uh, California looks at the San Joaquin Valley as that place, oh, well, we'll get there eventually. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna fly over it. Well, we need to make sure that the governor and other leaders in this state work to leverage whatever they can to support us. And I have to compliment our elected leaders 
from Merced County, Adam Gray and Senator Caballero, who have ad advocated for us, along with County CEO James Brown and our lead at MCDPH, um, Kristen Sullivan and Dr. Sandoval. We've all come together to make sure that Merced County is taken care of. What we've learned in the last year is that, first of all, the classroom is important, that kids need to be in a school and they need to have the relationship. That's really what education is about, that relationship. And so as we go into the future, there are a couple things we need to keep in mind. First of all, probably distance learning through digital platform is not going away. It'll be here, but we have to focus on how we engage students in the future and creating that relationship that we would have had otherwise in the classroom. One of the other things that we're gonna to have to probably face for another year at least is masking and social distancing. We don't know yet what August of 2021 will bring. And so we are thinking now we have to prepare for a standard school year, but we have to prepare for some students who may still choose to be in a virtual classroom. One of the other big problems that we've had, quite frankly, is the external forces of guidance every, every week and the guidance has changed. And to give you an example, from January to today, early March, we've had probably six different guidance directives from the governor or from the legislature as they propose legislation for the new return to school year. We all wanna be back in school so we can get back to some sense of normalcy and we can do what we know how to do. Thanks again for joining us for this annual report done virtually. If you'd like more information and you'd like to see the annual report, please go to mcoe.org slash annual report. There you will find uh, a lot of information that covers this past year. Folks, thank you so much for all you do for children in our community. I want you to stay safe, wear your masks, wash your hands, maintain your social distance so that next year we can be back in person. Hello, my name is Erica Gonzalez, and I'm a Managing Director with Stiefel. We are a longtime partner with the Merced County Office of Education, and the gathering for the annual education report is one of the events that I look forward to every year. While we are not able to see each other in person for this year's event, it continues to be an amazing opportunity to learn more about the great educational programs and services available to the children throughout Merced County. This past year has really tested all of us, but I continue to be in awe of teachers, administrators, and all leaders in education that have tackled unimaginable challenges and continue to ensure that our children are receiving the education they deserve and continue to thrive. Our team at Stiefel is honored to work alongside many of the school districts in Merced County, as well as MCOE, as you push for the types of facilities that will meet the needs of your students and prepare them for the careers of their future. We hope to increasingly get the opportunity to do some of this good work in person. But whatever else 2021 brings, please know that Steeple Bankers and Underwriters will be working hard on your behalf to support the lowest cost funding for school facilities. Thank you and stay well.